Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about mastering your character's in-game movement. Recently I've been getting an insane amount of messages from you all asking how to improve your general Fortnite movement. Typically we all think of improving things like your aim or your editing and building speed, yet something that's seemingly much simpler, like moving your character around, is actually a lot harder to get better at. A couple months ago I made a GameSense 101 video on improving your movement. That video focused more on movement tricks like spam crouching and crouch swinging that would help you win more fights. This video will be more for teaching you how to improve your movement as well as different ways to make your movement smoother and cleaner. Before we get into it though, my longtime partner ProGuides has a small announcement to make. I'm excited to let you all know that they're adding a ton of new features to their site, which include exclusive guide videos for pro members every single day, two, the Pro Pass now includes access to all games, three, up to 10 more free coaching passes for pro users. I highly recommend checking them out, so click the link in the description below. Really quickly, I'm going to throw up some timestamps in case you want to skip around. I'm mainly going to be focusing on keyboard and mouse movement because people tend to struggle with that more than control movement. A lot of the same concepts and tips will apply to both inputs, so be sure to watch the whole thing no matter what you play on. With that being said, let's start with the basics of your movement and what makes mastering it so challenging. On keyboard and mouse, most people move around with WASD. Some people use ESDF, and I know the new trend that Tfue almost jumped on was WASB. Regardless of what you use, the mechanics are the same in that one key moves you forward, another key moves you left, another right, and the last one backwards. As Beaks shows right here, this means you can only go in 8 different directions on keyboard and mouse. That's why keyboard movement feels so unnatural and clunky. With a controller where you have a joystick, you're not limited in those directions. You instead have what's called 360 degree movement, which allows you to be a lot smoother and pull off insane builds like these. Essentially, our goal is to get as close as possible to the smoothness and fluidity of joystick movement. My first tip to achieve that is to optimize your keybinds as much as possible. This is something way too many people overlook and don't realize hurts their movement dramatically. Struggling with movement in general is bad, but it can be improved upon relatively easily, and we'll address that later. But having poor movement while building is actually worse because unless you change your keybinds, it will not get much better. If you're someone who practices a lot, yet still has trouble winning build fights or pulling off simple retake techniques, it's probably due to having bad keybinds. My new optimal keybind philosophy, which I made an entire separate video about, is to put all of your building binds off of your movement key fingers. Think about what happens and what your fingers are doing as you build. By default, your fingers are resting on WASD. Your middle finger goes on W and also presses S, ring finger on A, and index finger on D. If you have any building bind on something like F, your index finger will not be able to press D at the same time. It will be too busy pressing F to build a wall or floor or ramp or whatever it is. It's literally impossible for your finger to be in two places at once and to hit two different keybinds at the same time. This concept also applies for any builds you hit with a key on your ring finger like Q. If you're pressing Q, you're not able to also press A, which means you can't move to the left at the same time you're building that specific structure. What this means is that while building, you actually don't have full control of your character. That's why I recommend to take as many building binds off of your movement key fingers, which are your index and ring finger, and instead put them on your thumb, pinky, and mouse buttons. For your keyboard thumb, that would be keys like X, C, and V. For your right thumb, which is on your mouse, that would be your side mouse buttons. And for your pinky, that would be left shift. If you're not comfortable with taking all of your building binds off your index and ring finger like me, then prioritize making your floor and ramp the optimal non-movement key ones. Those are the two builds that you can actually run and walk over, like you can't run over a wall. So if you can only use two mouse buttons, put them on your floor and ramp if possible. For the remaining builds, just put them on keys close to WASD like Q, F, E, and R. 
Obviously, the more building binds you have off your movement key fingers, the better, but don't force yourself to use something you physically cannot reach or that will hurt your hand. By doing all this, you'll have a lot more control and be able to move much more smoothly and freely. If you've ever watched Ghost Bizzle play, his movement and overall gameplay is so insanely smooth because of his keybinds. He hits his wall, floor, and ramp all with his thumb, so he never takes his fingers off WASD while building. This allows him full control of his character and the ability to make outplays simply with his movement. Another good example is Parallel Connor who is an insane creative builder. He has his wall and ramp builds on his mouse buttons, floor on left shift, edit on B which he hits with his thumb, and cone on Q. I don't think I've ever seen smoother and honestly more beautiful building in my life. All of these retakes and moves are possible with unoptimal keybinds, but your movement and building will not be as good as this while doing it. Now, before we move on, I know a lot of you are going to ask what the most optimal keybinds possible are. In my opinion, the keybinds Tfue Theory crafted and switched to for only a day are the most optimal keybinds you're going to get. He had V for walls, which he hit with his thumb, mouse buttons for floor and ramps, and left shift for cone. The reason he switched back was because that was before the World Cup where he tried it out, and I don't think he wanted to relearn everything with such little time before the World Cup. Currently, he's using two edit keybinds instead, which is why he hasn't switched to this. But I personally think more optimal keybinds and smoother movement is better than faster editing. The next tip for better movement is another settings option. It's season 10 now, boys, and if you don't have sprint by default on, you're trolling. You're straight up making your movement worse because you're too stubborn to enable the most helpful setting in the game. Sprint by default makes it so you're always sprinting. You'll never have to press shift or hold in your thumbstick to sprint ever again. The big reason you should have it on is that it makes your movement a lot more consistent. When I used to play without it, sometimes the game just would not sprint while I was in the middle of a build fight or I'd randomly start walking when I didn't mean to. Sprint by default completely negates things like that from happening and makes it easier to truly master your movement. Plus, it frees up left shift as a keybind which you can use for a building bind like your cone. Be aware though, sprint by default is completely different than toggle sprint or controller auto run. Both of those settings should be off because they also make your sprinting inconsistent and thus give you less control of your movement. My third tip for improving your movement is a pretty unorthodox one. It's actually to go and do creative death runs. It probably sounds crazy, but it's actually one of the best ways to quickly learn and improve upon your movement. When you just normally play public matches in Fortnite, you can usually get away with having subpar movement. This is especially true in squads and trios where you can just hold down your W key and have your teammates do most of the work. When you're playing on Scissor's death run though, your movement is all that matters. You're forced to think about every small step you take and constantly make micro adjustments to stay alive. If you do this, you'll very quickly start to develop muscle memory for how far your character will move while either holding down your movement key or tapping it or holding two different keys at once. These are things you don't often do in a regular match, so in order to focus your practice on just pure movement, try out some popular death runs and you will definitely see improvement. The fourth and final tip for better movement is simply to play and to play a lot. Good movement in Fortnite, just like building or editing, is purely a result of practice. If you recently switched over to keyboard and mouse, where you have no experience using WASD, you're obviously going to struggle. A joystick is a lot more natural and intuitive than hitting four different keys on your keyboard to move. Movement is by far the hardest and longest part of your gameplay to master. I know people that have been playing on keyboard and mouse for over a year and their movement is somehow still clunky and awkward. It took me around 2-3 to three months to have somewhat smooth movement and even longer than that to get to the level I'm at today. But as long as you're consistent and work for it, your movement will improve. Overall, the first and biggest piece of advice I have is to change your keybinds around. Optimize them as much as possible to give yourself more control while building. Second, turn on sprint by default and turn off toggle sprint and controller auto run. Third, play some creative death runs if you're really struggling and you want to try out an unusual way to improve your movement. And lastly, just get on Fortnite and practice. Put in the time and you will see good results. 
So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. We've been growing like crazy recently, and I want to thank you guys for that. I also have a huge giveaway planned since we passed 300k subscribers, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already because I'll be announcing it soon. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.